Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. I am Sovereign and we are back in New World. This time for the beginner's weapon guide. Now I'm going to show you what the weapons do, what weapons are good coupled with other weapons, so your first and your secondary weapons. I'm going to tell you what the general gameplay is like for those weapons and hopefully help you find out what you want to use from launch because it does take a little bit of time, not massive amounts. It's actually pretty good in New World to get your weapons up to the highest tier. Now I haven't personally used every weapon in the game. So my group who have been playing MMOs together for many many moons decided to split out the work and actually work and find out what worked best in each weapon type and compared them with each other so if you're going to want to look what the weapon masteries are what the weapons do with the light attacks for heavy attacks etc you just want to go in and press k and you want to go into the weapon mastery tab now you have your one-handed weapons your two-handed weapons your ranged weapons and your magic weapons so first up we're going to go with sword and shield now this is your pretty much generic tanking build it is very useful in pvp it's very useful in pve a lot of pvp guys right now are using sword and shield as a secondary slot for their gray axe or their hatchet because of a lot of the defensiveness you get out of the sword and shield the utility and the maneuverability that it does give you now it comes with certain skills like you have your leaping strike where it leaps four meters and deals 135 percent weapon damage now it's not a massive amount but if someone's just outside of your range it does really help along with the shield rush as well which jumps you forward five meters you have a lot of sort of support abilities within the sword and shield as well like free injustice where if you successfully hit a heavy attack it causes you to lose all debuffs a successful heavy attack grants you 30 percent in power so that is sort of a double buff using the same thing there and if you manage to get a block on your target then it does give you 10 percent damage increase so you can run in you can go in you can hit your heavy attack you can hit try to get a block off especially because most people in this game just want to rush in and just do damage so you can just get a block off then you're going to switch to your hatchet or your great axe and then you're just going to do massive amounts of damage the sword and shield also has things like slows reducing all magic damage types you have a stun with your shield bash which also has a skill that increases the duration there's a lot of skills in the actual defender line which helps you with your pve to get more to get more threat with more damage taunts when coupled with the actual carnelian gem for example when that's equipped in your sword it gives you a six second taunt to all enemies hit with the shield bash especially if you have people that aren't running around in circles kiting like pretty much standard every mmo if you have people that know what they're doing and they're keeping the mobs in a general vicinity you can just shield bash straight into them and hit everyone in front of you and get aggro so if you're looking for the more tanky style of play or a support build for one of your heavier weapons your great axe your warhammer or your hatchet then it's definitely a great secondary set to have or primary if you're going for tanking in pve now the rapier has more speed involved it applies a lot of bleeds it does a lot of damage by exploding those bleeds i don't know a better way of explaining it for instance the flourish and finish it lunges forward and it consumes all the rapier bleeds on any target and deals 110 percent of the damage immediately you have your tondo which does a lot of poisons when applying the first bleed the cooldown gets reduced so you can actually go in and start using that bleed a lot more times cooldown gets reduced again if it gets blocked so there's a lot of utility in there when it comes to people who are playing more defensively not a lot of people are using tondo to be honest a lot of people are saying it's not really that good but i uh, the, my, the guy that's using the actual rapier is really enjoying it and really enjoying what you actually get out of it when you're actually using the flourish and finish you get things like plus 20 stamina so you'll be able to actually dodge more which is part of the major mechanic of being defensive in this game when your tondo bleeds you can actually get the finish to go quicker if you go into the grace line you have more dodges and evades by using light attacks defense Defensive stances where you do get a stun where if you put this up and someone actually hits you with the repost up it actually stuns them and you do become invulnerable from damage on the outside when you do get a successful repost you can actually use the taunt gem as well with the rapier so you can actually tank with this it is compatible with the gem equipped in the rapier for you to get more taunting action going on you do get a 10 meter forward jump with the rapier so you can catch up for those people who are dodging away and trying to get away from you especially people with life staffs that have the ability to raise your haste of your actual character so you can run faster with abilities that raise your light and heavy attack damage after performing an ability personally i didn't like the rapier i don't like the way it plays i didn't like the way it looked especially when my friends were playing with it it has a sort of very niche use but it can be used in conjunction with the fire staff and ice gauntlet because it does use intelligence as a secondary stat so you can sort of split it between the two the guy that plays the rape with the rapier from our group uses sword and shield and or the musket as they use the same 
same primary and secondary stats. In my opinion, it hasn't got very good coupling skills with other weapon types. Now, moving on to the hatchet, one of the strongest weapons in the game currently with your berserk, with your social distancing, being able to damage whilst also slowing the target and dodging backwards, which is quite a massive defensive skill it has an actual heal reduction at range if you can hit them with the infective throw it reduces the target's damage and reduces the healing efficiency by 30 percent this is actually massive when it comes to pvp if you catch them with the rending throw it actually reduces the target's damage absorption allowing you to do way more damage with perks that allow you to get further distance if you actually hit them with the effective throw first and then you get a rending throw off afterwards you do 20 percent more damage and if you're using these in conjunction with each other to get these debuffs on top you can actually lower the abilities cooldown by quite a decent amount you get things like boot and rally in the throwing line where if you do have active debuffs on a target light attacks and aim throw regenerate 10 stamina allowing you to dodge more being quite defensive and having certain perks added to the actual infective throw causes it to be an aoe all in all it's just an insanely overpowered weapon system right now there are some other weapons that are currently in line with them depending on what you'd like to do and play as if you like to have a little bit of range with the hatchet if you're not interested in using it as a primary weapon having things like berserk in there can actually push you forward if you want to be a tank having that sword and shield with a secondary hatchet in there having that ber berserk allows you to actually get more threat down on a target you can be uninterruptible during berserk and you can't be staggered it removes all crowd control effects like stun slows and roots from the player all in all like it's just a really good secondary and primary weapon it's definitely something you should look into if you're looking at one of the stronger weapon types you can use the hatchet with the great axe the warhammer the spear the sword and shield and it will be very good with all of them i wouldn't couple the hatchet with any of the magic items it just doesn't work out as well but any of the melee weapons it is definitely very good so it's something to look out for now if we go into the spear the spear can actually at the moment one of my friends actually figured out a way to permanently stun lock someone to make them like unable to actually pvp you using skills like the javelin to actually knock down your target and stagger them with the sweep knocking them down cyclone giving them slow so they can't get away if you do miss one of your attacks you have bleeds and stuns in the other side of the impaler line as well it's a very very cc heavy weapon it's actually pretty damn good the damage isn't that great on it but what it actually brings in the actual support for your weapon sets is actually really good you have invigorating crits which restores 20 stamina on critical hits whenever you do critical hit you get 30 percent stamina regen when your stamina is below 50 percent you get four or five for successful heavy attacks which last for two seconds damage absorption by 50 percent increasing you increase your damage by 25 percent against knockdown targets and with a lot of these abilities that you actually have on here you can keep that up quite consistently and get that damage to really rack up there's a spin attack which actually pushes back targets three meters and applies a slow to them which also restores 25 stamina per hit making this actual weapon very mobile along with the ability like aggressive maneuvers which can actually reduce all spear cooldowns across the board by 20 percent if you hit the target within two seconds of actually successfully dodging which can be done quite a lot if you get very skilled with it so you can actually have this is the main ability which allows the spear to actually lock people down almost 100 percent of the entire battle i can see this actually being nerfed at some point because it is super powerful now with the spear you can actually use a rapier or a musket musket is probably the better one to use with the spear it uses the same same primary and secondary stats and it allows you to have sort of range slows to slow down targets that they do manage to get away from your spear barrage of cc madness the spear along with the hatchet is one of the more powerful weapons especially in pvp right now than a great axe the next one along the list is actually kind of a meta right now when it comes to people doing damage people are using great axe and sword and shield massively together for the maneuverability and the massive amounts of damage with a lot of charges a lot of maneuverability a lot of damage when you actually catch up to them when using certain left mouse button clicks or right mouse button clicks it does different damages with the damage being extended more and more depending on how far away you actually charge the target now the great axe does have the ability when you critically hit with the great axe to heal yourself for 10 percent of damage done if you do pick up that perk if someone manages to block you gain an extra 15 percent damage coupling that with the sword and shield getting if someone blocks you and then you get the sword and shield out you stun them and then you start smashing the hell out of them with the actual great axe you do massive amounts of damage it is actually ridiculous how much you do your critical damage is increased by 10 percent when you pick this one up the great axe attacks against foes below 30 percent health heal you for 10 percent of the damage done 
allowing for more survivability. Unlocking the ability Bloodlust later on down the line actually allows you to move 30% faster if someone is further away from you, being able to like sort of catch up to them to be able to use your charges, etc. Abilities like Reap, which can be used with the tanking as well. You can use it in conjunction with the Sword and Shield if you want to do some more damage. If you're fighting a boss that isn't really like sort of heal intensive, you can bring out the actual Great Axe, use the Reap, and it can actually heal you for 30% of the damage done that you do with the Reap itself. You have your execute ability when a person gets below 50% health you do you deal 300% weapon damage excellent finishes it's going to be very good against bosses in pve it's very good in pvp for hitting that big damage when you want to finally kill off a target there are more aoe based abilities in the mauler line i don't see many people using this in pvp or pve because the reaper line itself is just so massively good at survivability wise damage wise everything about the reaper line is just so much better than the mauler line in my opinion the only thing you should couple the gray axe with as i've said already is the sword and shield now moving on to the warhammer the warhammer doesn't have the survivability of the gray axe it's still a pretty decent weapon if you want to run around with a massive hammer and just smash people bypassing armor is very good against people with heavy armor but it's sort of niche in the way that you it's only really good against people that are actually wearing heavy armor which a lot of people won't be because the current meta is light armor especially when you're using the gray axe build with the sword and shield light armor being able to dodge roll and get more damage out more efficiently it's just the gray axe is just a better version of the warhammer at least in my opinion please let me know down below if you do enjoy the warhammer more than the actual gray axe you can also use the warhammer to actually tank with the shockwave applies a stun to all impacted targets for two seconds it's an aoe earthquake that you can use with the carnelian gem equipped in the warhammer and it taunts everything that it hits it can be used in pve as well if you're hitting a target with an active debuff you do get haste increasing your movement speed for 15 percent for three seconds a good way to actually catch up if someone dodge rolls out of the way of you and you're fighting with other people that may be using the uh, spear or the rapier to have bleeds or other debuffs on the target you have pushes if there's someone that's sort of trying to if there's a healer trying to keep in range of the person he's healing in the background if you're chasing after the healer and it's sort of trying to throw out hills and stuff you can knock it back a little bit further which if you use other the perks with it you can actually reduce the cooldown and increasing movement speed by 30 percent for three seconds with the crowd crusher being your more aoe style of weapon again the warhammer can be used with the sword and shield it is definitely one of the better combos over here you can use it with the hatchet same as the gray axe can be used with the hatchet as well to increase the damage but at the moment the sword and shield combo with the two-handed weapons is definitely a much better way to go now with the ranged weapons you've got the bow and the musket now the bow has abilities that can actually slow people down depending on where you hit them if you hit them in the head you'll do more damage if you hit them in the legs you'll actually cause a slow there's poisons with the arrows you got rain of arrows which does damage to an aoe and the rain of arrows actually causes slow if you do pick up some of the perks in hooked arrows evade shot when you're actually using this ability you jump back and you actually get a bit of a speed boost when picking up the go to distance perk getting 15 percent haste and also if you pick up the secondary perk you can actually push the person further away while you're jumping back giving you more freedom of movement you have various range knockbacks and aoe abilities in the splinter shot you have the penetrating shot which actually can go through a target and if there's some if, there, if for some reason you've got people standing in a queue waiting to 1v1 you you can actually fire this penetrating shot it's going to go through everyone in the line now the ranged weapons like the bow and the musket themselves do require ammo so it does take a lot more to actually carry all that stuff you have to do a lot of crafting or collecting depending on how many boxes you're picking up so it can be a bit of a ball ache to be using the ranged weapons as a primary weapon especially if you're out some distance away and you're running low and then run into some pvp now with the musket itself you have burn statuses which can have which deal sort of damage every second some dot damage on there you've got the power shot causing your next shot to do more damage with some other perks in there with a 10 percent damage for extra five seconds and then you have damage to targets with full health using the powder burn in conjunction with the power shot can actually cause massive amounts of damage especially for someone wearing light armor who haven't really got much health so your healers for example if they just stand in there if you move the if you use these in conjunction with each other you can actually do some massive damage i've been three shot by musket users before with headshots reducing cooldowns on a lot of your abilities damage increases by looking down your actual 
barrel of your gun. Now the trapper lion gives you, gives you some traps, so you'll be able to lay some stuff down. If someone tries to come up behind you, they will get locked up in that trap, allowing you to get away from some stuff. With some AoEs in the sticky bomb, which if you have people running away and you manage to get a sticky bomb on a target, three seconds later, it will explode and do AoE damage to a lot of people around them. You can gain 40 stamina when using this. It's a good way to be able to get your stamina back up to do more dodges as well. Stopping power can have perks that actually increase your stamina regeneration by 10%. And players that are hit with stopping power are actually slowed by 10% if you want to catch up with one of your bigger weapons. The musket can be used with the great axe, the war hammer, the rapier, the spear. I would personally, if you're going for a musket build, I would use the spear for being able to actually CC the crap out of people if they do manage to catch up to you. And I would definitely use the musket over the bow for myself personally, with just with the ability to being able to do massive amounts of damage from the get-go on 100% health targets. Now moving on to the weapons for the magic line, you have the fire staff. Now the fire staff has your abilities to do a lot of AOE damage and burning damage causing a lot of dots, giving you mana regeneration and fire staff cooldown if you pick up perks like catch. Your heavy attacks will reduce your fire staff cooldowns by 10% every time you hit with them. Your heavy attacks not consuming mana if you pick up flare, which is massive. It's especially when you're using an actual magic staff ability. Most of your abilities are going to be used with light attacks and heavy attack because you do restore 5% of your max mana on hit with heavy attacks if you do pick up the spell focus perk and reduces cooldowns of weapons when you're using your heavy attacks with fiery restoration. Now in a pyromancy line, you've got flamethrower, which is catching enemies on fire, which is more, this is your more dot line where you're actually giving you a lot of dots, which is actually pretty decent in PvP. If you can get a lot of these abilities off and do a lot of dot damage to them, if they even if they're running away you will be taking some people out there are perks like combat speed that actually raises your haste for 10 seconds you'll move faster for five seconds with a cooldown of 10 seconds when you activate a fire staff ability being able to be used in conjunction with maybe getting away or catching up with someone to be in range of abilities and incinerate being your actual heal using cauterized wounds which restores 20 percent of incinerate damage back as health but it does push enemies back and if you've got a lot of your guys running in a melee you've got to be careful with how you use that ability moving on to a live staff my personal favorite my personal used weapon now fire staff is better used in conjunction with other intelligence focused weapon sets like your musket your rapier or your ice gauntlet a lot of people are actually using double fire staff to be able to have more abilities so you have your one fire staff which does all your dot damage and one fire staff that does all of your actual direct damage abilities which is very viable you can use the same weapon if you want to use two different types of skill sets one for a more defensive and one for a more offensive each weapon has their offensive and defensive line so the live staff you're going to be having abilities like your divine embrace now i wouldn't personally use this i was testing this out which is why it's on here but i would personally use the lights embrace instead of the divine embrace now this weapon is basically obviously just for your healers or used as a secondary weapon to be able to pull out and grant yourself some healing it does it is the only weapon that is used in the focus line so you do have to like sort of put points in focus for it to be viable especially in the later games but but for you to just sort of top yourself up or give yourself a four or five buff or whatever, you don't need that much focus in there. You can concentrate on your primary and secondary of your main weapon and still use the life staff effectively. When you use your light staffs, light and heavy, you actually get for a 15% fortify, reducing incoming damage. Your orb of protection will give you a fortify for 20 seconds and it will heal you if you are in the uh, vicinity of where it hits. Now you do have to aim at the floor when you're using this ability, when you're using it on itself. You can get recovery, which is your heal over time. If you pick up the perk like share protection, if you pick up Aegis for this orb of protection, you actually, uh, it becomes an AOE. So you can actually gain fortify on a lot of your targets and re recovery on a lot of your targets when you're actually using that it's good in pve it's good in pvp now a lot of people are using splash of light members within 100 meters are actually healed for 50 percent weapon damage it doesn't really do too well unless you're fully focused on the focus line and you are fully focused on the live staff but you do have sacred ground which a lot of people are also using which heals for 20 percent of your weapon damage every second i personally would go for beacon because you can actually fire this on a target and it will follow the target around so the aoe heal if you fire this on an enemy and you've got all of your melee guys chasing this one enemy it will heal all of your guys within 
who are chasing that enemy down. Or if your guys are running in a melee train, you can throw it on the guy at the front and everyone within the AoE will still be healed. It is very nice. I do very much like this skill. It's pretty much your generic healer abilities and healer and your healer weapon. Only those that are going to be really wanting to heal will primary in this life stuff. It is very easy to level with. Definitely very beginner friendly when it comes to actually leveling and doing the questing and not dying. Now, if lastly, we have the Ice Gauntlet. Now, the Ice Gauntlet does a lot of AoE damage. It does a lot of bonus buff stuff you get a lot of debuffs and buffs across the board when dropping things like your actual ice pylon if you pick up other perks you'll be getting you'll be getting slows down which is basically like a turret which you can actually put down and it hits everyone around you you have the ability in tune which actually puts you in a block of ice which is uh, if you've played world of warcraft it is basically ice block it can be destroyed if enough damage is done to it but when you are actually being hit with this uh, with this entombed up i almost called it ice block you can actually you won't actually take damage yourself. You can break out of the ice tube, ice tomb whenever you want, or you can use the left mouse button and you can actually cause a knockback, but it does cost you 20 mana. If you pick up the cleansing tomb perk with the actual entombed ability, you do you can cleanse all the debuffs when you do entomb, so it's a good way if you've got a lot of bleeds and stuff on you to be able to get those bleeds off of you, especially if you haven't got a healer around you. It can be used in that way rather than a fully defensive way, more of a proactive way. There's a lot of roots and slows in the actual ice corner line, so it's definitely a way for those people who want to be able to control and cc a battlefield from range it does do massive amounts of damage in skills like ice storm ice spikes but ice spikes is kind of weird because you have to get someone to be standing you have to sort of double click the ability to be able to get it to go off right underneath your targets to do maximum damage it can be very difficult especially when people are running around dodging all the bloody time but i use ice gauntlet in conjunction with life stuff for the bonus buffs and stuff you get and the extra damage if you don't need to heal in a boss phase or if you're doing so if you're getting towards the boss and you chuck your AoE heal down, you don't need to do anything else. You just pull out the ice gauntlet and do your stuff that way. Now, I hope I was able to help you guys sort of figure out what the different weapon sets kind of do, what people are using right now, a general gist of what is going on and help you to sort of pick what you want for when you're going into launch. There will be more beginner's guides coming out up until launch. There will also be more in-depth guides coming out after launch. I don't want to put massive amounts of time into the more in-depth guides, so they're going to be changing by the time launch comes out because there will likely be a lot of changes in this month between the end of the beta and the start of actual launch remember to like and sub if you haven't already i want to thank you all for watching fly safe and avoid local chat scams